उस खुदाब रिली नथिंग टू कम अप टू सायरन यू हैव द लैंड बैंक एंड काइंडली लिसन टू द रूल्स kasi itong landbank uh, bubuksan namin and you can borrow money to finance the education of your children uh, lahat ito pupunta ito sa talagang negative meaning to say that we are hard pressed in our finances but uh, uh, we have to place the premium of education so that this is would be another round of uh, uh expenses but uh, land bank uh, is there to help you and uh, dito po ako interesado i want uh, the development of this uh, endeavor of the land bank to help gusto ko malaman na, na matutupad talaga so maybe i will require a report every day of how it goes how it would present itself to the public once it is available and uh, you know the ncr will now be placed under the general community quarantine or the jcq starting june 1 Davao City will remain GCO, GCQ rather, and the other areas uh, under GCQ. Uh, ano itong ating uh, task force? The regions that would remain under GCQ will be regions two, three, four. A and Pangasinan Albay uh, yan sila uh, until uh, until we have reviewed the general situation uh, we are not uh, happy to put you in this place but uh, after review maybe we can uh, but just, just let me tell you today that of those who are of late infection or those arriving in the country we have a spike of about uh, 5000 uh, secretary uh, 500 rather sorry 500, 500 lang and secretary doki will expound more on that Uh, the rest of the country will be placed under modified general community quarantine. Uh, again, the rest of the country will be placed under modified general community quarantine. Uh, that is very clear now. Uh, in other areas, it will be... Uh, again on a piecemeal uh, basis depending on the uh, viability of the place to meet the challenges of uh, covid but from to time from time to time, time uh, uh, secretary rocky would give us uh, the places where there will be changes uh, the opening of the airports I have asked uh, Secretary Tugadi, and he will have his time later to explain what are his plans. Uh, we would like to know, sabay sabay tayo. Then, dito sa assistance ng OFW, we are co coordinating with every government agency to help them. Uh, and uh, sana po hindi na ito maulit yung there was this uh, uh, stranded Filipinos not knowing where to go and when and uh, we decided uh, 
immediately that the Dibya returned to their home provinces. Nangyari po ito, uh, halos sa kanila nakauwi na. But we are expecting the 300,000 something that uh, Secretary Bellio has communicated to us. And that would be also a problem again. But this time, we should know what to do. It's a matter of uh, calibrating every arrival and maybe sending immediately, uh, if possible, the overseas workers uh, coming in first. Unless, of course, they are detained because of uh, they are sick of COVID. I mean, sick, sick, uh, talagang kailangan ng hospital. Uh, dito naman sa well, I, let, 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 let me uh, appeal to the ito mga landlords, the owner of uh, lahat na, malls, bazaars, uh, big stores, whatever, na merong mga uh, anong tawag nito yung franchise nila sa may mga different stores selling different anything. Uh, what you have is the you own this the big building to be rented out. Marami dito sa kanila po uh, ang gusto ninyo na magbayad ng 50% even if they are not operating. Actually, uh, I am at a loss really to explain to you how. But you know, uh, when you collect from somebody who is not earning at all, it's practically flagging a dead horse Uh, eh, kung patay na yung kabayo baski gaano mo kahampas dyan hindi na mabubuhay yan and that is what's happening if they are not earning where will they get the 50% to pay if not the 100% that you'd want to collect so it seems to me a problem but I would like to appeal to the Uh, owners of the buildings, of the malls and every, everything. Ganito na lang. Uh, just pray everybody has a God. Uh, just pray that uh, the vaccine, ang target nila is uh, November, uh, September. September, I think China will be able to uh, distribute if I'm not mistaken and the other countries are catching up Every everybody is at it so they are uh, really trying their very best kaya uh, lang itong China hindi ito hambog wala itong ere but they they, 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 they you know they work and I, I'm, I'm very sure that uh, They will be the first one, one, one of the countries that would be able to come up with the vaccine. Ang um, atin ito is uh, yung mga rental sana, balikan ko, uh, should be a matter that should be addressed by the DTI and there can be some sort of an adjudication process to fix this uh, problem. Ako naman, nagkikiusap, nagmakaawa, dahil nga, talagang, you know, if you're not earning, how, how are you supposed to pay? So, maawa naman tayo sa mga kababayan natin, Let us help one another. If it does not really spell bankruptcy, say in you, 
Eh, di tiisin na lang ninyo with uh, nothing except your savings to tide you over. Baka sakali makatulong yung appeal ng gobyerno. Remember that the nation is still, the entire nation is still under quarantine. Uh, let us move to the so-called new normal as we, uh, let's see what develops ahead. Okay, kung mayroon lang bukas, I will be the first to announce. But, uh, alam mo, remember, the COVID microbes, microbes are still in the air that you breathe, that you pass on to your fellow men if you are not uh, ready or willing to wear the mask. It is precisely, this is the protection not for you, if you do not want it, but for the protection of the other guy. And that is why the state has every right to control your movement if you pass on a contagion to the other to the population. Kasi kung ikaw lang ang gusto, ayaw mo, and there are people who are like that, Ayaw nila. And they believe that they have the antibodies to fight the coronavirus. So, if the virus is there, tapos gusto mong labanan, bahala ka. But for you to pass that virus, if you get it from one place and from another person and pass it to the other guy, that's different. That is where the right of the state comes in. So that to prevent uh, a mass contagion, gusto namin putulin kung saan namin maputol to stop it. That is the reason of the essence of the police power of the state, to come up with measures to protect public interest, public health, public safety, lahat. Nandiyan yan. Case of uh, peace and order, magkagulo, the state comes in. Yung may contagion and everybody is dying, falling, uh, kasali yan. Public interest is a uncontrolled movement or uh, baski ano, uh, people trying to seize other people's property or things like uh, uh, just being into a state of anarchy. Uh, the state has the right to come in and put a stop on it. It is the survival of the Republic of the Philippines. Now, this is the uh, this is a country of Filipinos who obey the laws. If you do not obey the law, <laughs> that's your problem. Bahala ka. Good kung makasibat ka. Kung hindi ka makasibat, ay pasensya ka. And that goes for everybody. That should be made clear. Hindi kasi ano ng tao na they take for granted violating the law. Now we would start a program, we we'll start with uh, Secretary Brunes because I think it's the, it's the foremost in the minds of uh, people. Go ahead, ma'am. Uh, let the cameras uh, be trained to... Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, my statement will be very short. It's based on a letter which I wrote to you after uh, you made your statement about uh, not allowing uh, the opening of classes uh, during the time of COVID. And so uh, we are here from the DepEd to assure you that we are one with you in your uncompromising stand on the matter of the health and the safety of our learners and our teachers. 
Uh, you said, I will not allow the opening of classes na dikit-dikit ang mga bata. Para sa akin, bakuna muna bago andyan ang bakuna, okay na. Uh, we are saying because there is confusion uh, and anxiety among uh, Filipinos, families, especially the parents. We are, we are here to state that we are one uh, with you, Mr. President, in this non-negotiable uh, commitment. It is the first and the most important principle when we work out our uh, learning community plan with all the details, we stated this also. The first and foremost concern is the health and safety of our learners and our teachers. Uh, Mr. President, there has been a confusion among our people who associate uh, the opening of school with what we describe as face-to-face -face classes, uh, where uh, we are used to learners, we are used to teachers facing each other, and we are used to children going to school physically. But we are saying that there will be no face-to-face -face classes and sessions until we are assured of the safety of our children and our teachers. However, we also believe, Mr. President, that we can provide learning opportunities to our students without necessarily requiring them to go to school. And this we can do through what is described as blended and distant learning. Mr. President, this is not a new thing. We have many universities and schools which offer distant learning in many ways. We now call it blended learning because various approaches which are adjusted to the actual situation of the communities will be um, applied. But these are all, Mr. President, consistent with your preference that we should not be physically sending our children to school until it is safe to do so. Uh, what is the so-called blending or learning modalities? Because right now, there is a bill which is filed uh, in Congress on this. One, for those who don't have uh, connections, who don't have uh, interactive facilities, uh, there will be what we describe as printed material, which will be delivered to the homes of the students through the barangays, can be picked up also by their parents at designated places within coordinated schedules. We'll be working very closely with the barangays and the local governments. And the second approach is now very popular, Mr. President. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the online uh, learning uh, platform. And uh, we, in DepEd, we have what we describe as DepEd Commons. Right now, we already have over 7 million uh, subscribers. We're in lessons. Uh, homework, quizzes, tips to learners and to teachers are all in the DepEd Commons and are accessible even to the parents. So we have instances, Mr. President, of parents who are abroad and who are monitoring what is happening to their children, they also re go to the DepEd Commons and check on how their children are doing. Now, in cases, Mr. President, where there is no connectivity, and printed materials may not be available immediately. We have the classic long time uh, approaches, which have always been used in education. And this would be television. Those uh, homes which do not necessarily have connectivity and may have television. And the most and the best used uh, approach, of course, is radio based yeah. instruction. Kasi ang television, mga 1950s, 60s, radios have been around since the 1800s when it was first um, uh, invented. And we know that two world wars were won through radio uh, messages and not necessarily computers and so on. So yung printed modules, Mr. President, um, we have uh, a description of what it entails. And then also, uh, on the matter of online, ito yung popular talaga, it's gaining popularity, online distance learning with already 7 million subscribers. And um, 
we assume here that they have access to internet. And one worry is how about the students and the teachers? Do they have access to laptops? We made a survey, uh, Mr. President, of teachers, more than about 788,000 of them, uh, to find out whether they have laptops or desktops in their homes. More than 80%, nearly 700,000, have laptops or desktops in their homes. Because teachers uh, acquire these for various uh, uses. They have family members abroad, or friends, etc., etc. So um, this is a very, very popular uh, mechanism for uh, dispensing education. Now, for those who don't have access to uh, interconnectivity, then we have television. Right now, Mr. President, 15% of television time, this is provided by law, should be dedicated to programs, of, uh, programs designed for children. So there are already existing educational programs uh, on television stations. What we need to do is to utilize these programs to transmit our curricula. And we are working out uh, how to do this. Uh, for example, Mr. President, PCOO uh, is volunteering its TV facilities and also IBC 13, which is radio, for the utilization of lessons through radio and television. Radio and television for those who don't have access to a computer. Now, radio-based instruction is quite popular, Mr. President, because right now, municipalities are volunteering. Usually, municipalities have their radio stations. Cities have radio stations. There are local radio stations. And big networks also have uh, radio stations. And many of them have lessons, which uh, yung tawag nyon is um, uh, schools of the air. Um, mayroong mga uh, religious groups, they give lessons in agriculture, lessons in uh, whatever sciences over the air because alam nila uh, not everybody has access to television or to uh, online computers. So ito yung pinaka uh, ancient, pinaka matandang uh, paraan for, for teaching as an alternative to face-to-face. -to -face. Now, Mr. President, what we are doing in the regions is the regions are different from each other. Uh, some regions have many islands, some regions have many mountains, some regions have, uh, have interconnectivity, and so on and so forth. So what our regions are now do doing is to translate our curriculum from curriculum for lecture, the teacher lectures the children uh, uh, for long periods of time. It has to be translated one into digital modes, sa platforms natin into television programs because children have to be uh, taught uh, through in a different way. Iba yung effect ng television programs because their attention span can be very brief as well. And then also converted into radio scripts. So this is where much of the work is now being concentrated. What we are saying, Mr. President, is that we fully and completely support your stand that our children should not be exposed to the dangers of COVID-19 physically, but we are also offering opportunities for them to continue their studies and their learnings. And some people ask, are we prepared? What we are trying to do, Mr. President, are not really new. Hindi naman to bagong invento because uh, distance education, many universities have the distance education programs. Many local governments have radio stations. We are utilizing existing ways of communication without necessarily uh, uh, requiring our children to go to school. So they can still go to school, they can still study, Teachers can monitor them as well as their parents. So ito yung ano namin, Mr. President, which we would like to share with you. And we seek your approval of our um, alternative ways of learning, which are already existing right now.
And these are being done by many schools. But this time, mas malaki ang emphasis because we are now shifting to less physical, face-to-face -face classes. But education will continue, uh, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, I'm impressed with the simplicity of the uh, program. And uh, I believe that uh, all that you have said is really feasible. Radio, Wolan television, and all of these things. I, I believe we have a very workable program, and I support you. Thank you. And should you require any help uh, from any of the departments, feel free to communicate with them. And with a question of funding, I will uh, uh, sort to speak scrape the bottom, the bottom of the barrel. barrel. <laughs> uh, just to, well, kung wala na tayong pera, edukaran lang sa, edukaran lang sa edukasyon sa mga bata. We will have to forgo many things uh, along the way uh, because of uh, what happened. But uh, education, I think, uh, if, it, if it is uh, compromised, it should be negligible so that it should go on because uh, uh, the future of this country depends on the how we educate our young people nowadays. I agree with you in this program. I support you. And if there's anything that we can do, the ALG and uh, or whatever, uh, we you. will... Uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, President. Endeavor to help you. Thank you. So, <clears throat> with that, uh, we are through with education. I would just like to announce to the public, as of today, we have a total number of COVID cases of 15,588. Now, the recovery is uh, 92 new ones uh, with a total of something like 3,598 to date. Ang patay po is 921. So you would see that uh, Philippines has uh, uh, ratio and proportion uh, we shall be with the population. We have uh, a low rate of uh, mortality here in this country. The total active cases is 11,069. So um, in CR, we stop not sure which is 330 or 61%. Then we have Region 7, 55, others 99, uh, repatriate, yung dati na, dala dito 55. All in all, uh, para sa akin, hindi naman masama ito. So let's go to uh, the Secretary of, uh, he has uh, some important matters to take up with the public. Uh, Secretary Doki, please. Uh, magandang gabi po, uh, Mr. President and fellow members of the Cabinet at uh, sa lahat po ng ating mga kababayan. Uh, gaya po ng sinabi ni uh, Pangulo, ang uh, ating pong uh, kaso uh, na nadagdag as of 4 o'clock uh, p.m. Uh, today, May 28, 539 at uh, 330 nag, uh, galing po sa NCR, 55 naman galing sa Central Visayas at 99 mula sa ibang mga rehiyon at 55 na mga repatriates na ito po yung kasama sa mga uh, lumalaking bilang ng atin po mga OFWs na isinasa ilalim po natin sa RT-PCR testing. At karamihan po sa atin mga kaso ay masasabi natin po mga uh, local. Ang total number of cases po natin ngayon ay 15,588 at kumpara po sa nakaraan araw ay ang trend ng bilang ng mga kaso ay tumaas. Ngunit dahil po ito sa patuloy din na pagtaas ng bilang ng mga kasong ating pong nababalidate. 
Ngayon, uh, ibig ko rin pong bigyan din na ang uh, uh, DOH po, ang ating missions na mga iba't ibang mga laboratories. Pero yung mga ibang mga laboratories ay late pa rin sa pagsumiti nila ng kanilang Excel sheets. Yung iba naman po ay uh, patuloy ang uh, manual validation process. At uh, yung mga ibang uh, ibig kong uh, uh, bigyan na uh, pansin ang mga laboratorio na nag-automate na po ng kanilang mga sistema. So, mabilis po ang, uh, ang pag-sumite uh, ng kanila po ng uh, mga uh, laboratory results. Uh, tumaas man po ang uh, atin kaso, uh, pero sa pangkalahatan naman, ang mild cases po natin ay asa 90%. At 7.3% naman ang uh, asymptomatic, yung wala pong uh, nararamdaman na uh, sakit. At less than 2% naman po ang uh, severe uh, to uh, critical cases. At uh, ibig ko rin pong bigyan din na uh, sa kasalukuyan po ang ating uh, health systems capacity ay sapat. In fact, we have uh, around uh, mga uh, 60 plus percent reserve capacity in terms of available mechanical ventilators, available um, intensive care uh, units, and also our isolation uh, uh, beds. Ano po? So, uh, meron pong uh, tayong uh, 92 na bilang ng atin mga kababayan na nadagdag sa mga nakarecover. Kaya sa kabuuan, ito po ay umabot na ng uh, almost uh, mga 3,600 recoveries. Kasama po sa mga nakaka-recover ay ang mga pasyenteng uh, na-confine at mga pasyenteng may mga positive, uh, mild and symptomatic cases na na-recover mula sa kanilang self-isolation at uh, home uh, quarantine. Ngunit uh, malukot po kami na uh, meron po tayong mga labing pito na mga kababayan na, dag, na dagdag sa bilang ng atin na uh, mga pumanaw uh, dahil po sa sakit na COVID-19. At kami po ay uh, nakikiramay sa mga pamilya na, na ulila uh, bunsod po ng pagpanaw ng atin po ng uh, uh, labing pitong mga kababayan. Uh, yun lang po, uh, Mr. President, ang akin na uh, update po. Maraming salamat, sir. Uh, thank you, Secretary Duque, for that report. I hope that uh, the public uh, um, is able to grasp the whole of the uh, dimensions that have been given to Secretary Duque for your information. Now, I would like to call on Secretary Tugade uh, if he has something to say about uh, the airports. And all their, uh, not only the airports, but uh, all their uh, uh, means of transportation under uh, under your uh, department. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, magandang gabi po. Uh, let me uh, predicate what I'm going to say and present by saying that while the mandate of the uh, Department of Transportation and Kagawaran and Transportation is to provide transportation, mobility, and convenience amongst its uh, population, it is now also vested with the responsibility that the Department of Transportation must help in preventing the spread of the coronavirus. This having been said, the approach of the Department of Transportation is partial, gradual and calculated, and more importantly, by faces. Kaya nga ba't kung ang tatanungin, ano yung gagawin ng Department of Transportation in transitioning from MECQ to GCQ? Allow me to state in addressing immediately the query of the mayor in saying, ano ang mangyayari sa mga paliparan sa mga airport? Ganun po yung polisiya na gusto naming mangyayari sa paliparan at airport. Una po, ngayon ho concentrated yung international landing and takeoff doon po sa NAIA 1, Terminal 1, 2, 3, and 4. Ang gagawin po namin once we transition from MECQ to GCQ is to expand the international aviation gateways to include Clark, Cebu, and Davao. Mahalaga hong sasabihin namin na as we expand 
the international gateways, aviation gateways, kaakibat ho nito yung plano namin magtayo ng mga test laboratories. Uh, meron na hong matatapos na laboratory testing sa Clark, sa, meron na hong matatapos sa Cebu. Ito po, pag nagawa ito, mahalaga ho ito. Kasi kung darating ho yung mga pasahero from international sa mga primary gateways na ito, kailangan ho yung testing facilities nandodon. Kaya na, nagkakapit bisig ho kami sa Department of Health saka sa Red Cross na kung saan mapadali yung accreditation ng mga laboratories na to. Mahalaga ho na sabihin na while we put up the testing laboratories, there are already accredited hospitals which can do the testing in Clark and in Cebu. Kaya nga ho, kung wala pa yung accreditation ng Red Cross or ng DOH, pwede na hong gamitin yung mga palipara na to. Hangarin po namin na kung sa pag-umpisa ng transition from MCQ to GCQ, hangarin po namin na every one or two weeks dagdagan yung international gateways para mapasama yung Sambuanga, Iloilo, Bacolod, and Bohol. Mahalaga ho ito kasi this is one way of decongesting what is happening right now at Naiya Terminal 1, 2, 3, and 4 and putting it uh, in the provinces and region. Bear in mind that we are an archipelago and therefore it is imperative that we spread the aviation uh, centrum of operations to other parts of the country, other parts of the region. Kaya nga ho gagamitin ito. Ngayon, ito po yung international. Kaakibat ho nung international ay yung domestic, yung domestic operation. Iyalaw po namin na magkaroon ng domestic air operation dun po sa GCQ to GCQ. Mahalaga ho ito pagkat gaya ng sinabi ko, tayo ho ay isang archipelago. Kaya nga ba kung magkakaroon tayo ng operasyon sa Mindanao at Bisaya, hindi ho natin ililimit na magmula at magsimula sa Central Luzon yan. Meron na hong Bisayas and Mindanao. And we will start what I call, Mr. President, Mayor, Sir, yung tinatawag namin na hub and spoke operation. H-U-B-S-P-O-K-E -E. na kung saan, kung darating yung mga malalaking sasakyan uh, sa mga probinsya, magkakaroon ho ng domestic operation yan. In other words, gusto ho natin na magkaroon na ng hubbing operation sa mga probinsya at region natin nang sa ganon, ma-spread yung aviation potentials at maitanim yung punla para sa tinatawag natin not only of domestic mobility but more importantly and so yung domestic tourism. Ito po, uh, Mayor, ang general approach sa aviation. Kung papayagan po ako ng ating mahal na uh, alkalde, presidente, magsabi lang ho ako ng ibang mga pamaraan at panuntunan na gagawin sa ibang transportation sector, kagaya ng tren, nung road, at nung maritime. Kung papayagan po ng ating Pangulo. Uh, sasabihin ko ho, kung tayo magta-transition from MECQ to GCQ, on the first day, that we transition and it's put into effect, we can already put into operation our train and rails operation. Habang nag-uusap po tayo ngayon, nagsisimula ang ating mga tao sa rails at railways na kung saan sinisimulate nila kung paano maumpisa to. Sabihin ko na lang ho, namarkahan na yung bawat upuan, namarkahan na yung bawat ali, namarkahan na yung pagbili ng tiket, namarkahan na yung queuing. Anda na ho ito. Ah... Uh, Pag sinabing lunes, handa ho kami sa lunes. Bagamat sasabihin ko antimano, wag i-expect na yung operation on ang trend is 100%. As I said, uh, we have to balance our mandate to provide transportation with our responsibility to help in the spread of the virus. Therefore, the capacity will also be limited, gradual, and calculated. It will be an average of 10 to 12 percent sa LRT at MRT. Doon sa PNRO, ang capacity, mga 35 percent. Ngayon ho, para ma maayos ito, sabihin ko na lang ho, part of the, uh, part of the future efforts here, ito po ang sasabihin ko. Matatapos na ho namin yung pagpalit ng release ng trend sa MRT3 by September of this year. 
Ano ho ang ibig sabihin nito? Ang ibig kong sabihin nito na pag umandar na yung MRT3 sa kabuuan ng kanyang pagdagusdos at maayos na yung trend, yung average uh, headway ho natin na uh, five minutes mababawasan ho yan. Yung kilometers per hour travel time na ngayon 30 kilometers per hour, by December ho, Mr. President, target po namin na yung speed magiging 60 kilometers per hour kasi nabago na yung realist ng trend. Mababalik po ito sa dati na kung saan sabi natin, eto na yung MRT3. Bakit importante yung realist? Importante yung realist sa katrend pagkat kasi ho, Mr. President, massive ho ang pasahero nito kumpara sa modernized jeepney, sa grab, sa taxi, eh, mas madami ho dito. Kaya concentrated ho kami dyan. Ngayon, to augment, uh, because limited capacity yung takbo ng tren, meron ho kaming tinatawag na bus augmentation system. Yung bus augmentation system, ganito po yon in generic terms. Ikakasaho namin yung operation ng tren with a bus operation following the same line. Para nang sa ganon, ma-achieve natin more or less yung tinatawag na volume of passengers that move. Ngayon ho, mag introduce ho kami ng bagong pamaraan. Ito hong bus augmentation system ay magkakaroon ng tinatawag na dedicated lane sa EDSA. Mid lane. Ah, ibig sabihin, may tatakbo ho dyan na bus. Sa umpisa ho, kasi sinabi po natin, gradual, calculated, and partial. Uh, ito ho, baka gamitin ho muna namin dyan, Mr. President, mga 300 to 500 buses. Sasamahan ho yan. Pag uh, nag nagawa ho ito, i-increase po namin yan. Maalala niyo ho yung uh, LRT na nasira ng tatlong istasyon na hindi pa mag-ooperate ngayon. Lalagyan ho namin ng bus operation yon para yung 10 stations ng LRT will be put in operation with the combination of rail and bus. Meron hong bus augmentation system, babaguhin ho namin ang EDSA. Sasabihin ko na rin ho, yung gagawin nating landscape sa EDSA. Ultimately, magkakaroon po tayo ng tinatawag na bike lane na kung saan nakikipagkapit bisik kami sa MMDA at the Department of Public Works para maumpisahan at buhayin ulit yung tinatawag na bicycle lane. Uh, pag ito ho na na-prove sa aming eksperimento na kaya gagawin ho namin yung strukturang permanent, sabihin ko lang ho na yung bicycle lane will not be limited to EDSA. It will be limited to parts of the country if it works. Uh, ngayon ho, uh, ang component ho ng road sector, kung Ooperated mo yung red sector, ano naman ang mag operate sa kalsada? Nasabi ko na ho yung bus augmentation system. ma operate ho yung P2P, uh, point to point. Wala hong stop yan. Ibig sabihin, itong P2P, sasama sa dedicated lane, sa agos ng dedicated lane. Nandiyan dyan po, yung tinatawag natin na uh, yung grab sa taxi pwede hong mag-operate yan. Sabihin ko na lang ho, Mr. President, alam niyo ho ba na uumpisahan natin part of the new normal? Magkakaroon ho tayo ng digitalized operation sa taxi, sa bus, na kung saan merong cashless transaction. Again, to help prevent the spread of the disease. Ito na ho yung mga card system. Ginagawa ho at gagawin ho namin sa taxi at sa mga modernized jeepney at sa bus yan. Uh, part of the uh, digitalization program, without oversimplifying, but just to show to our people who are listening and watching, meron no tayong digitalization program. Alam niyo ho ba, yung lisensya ngayon, pupunta ka sa LTO, doon mo kukunin? Ngayon, minsan yung address nila, problema ho yan, hindi totoo. Nagkakaroon ho kami ng online issuance and application. In addition to that, yung mga lisensya at plaka, yung renewal ng plaka at lisensya, hindi ka na ho pupunta, plano namin, sa LTO offices i-deliver ho yun ang courier. Uh, this is one way also of making sure that the addresses dun sa mga na-issue ng lisensya ay totoo. Kasi ang nangyayari ho ngayon, pag nagkakaroon ho tayo ng problema sa kalsada at hahanapin mo yung address, wala ho dun. 
So meron ho mga programang ganoon. Sasabihin ko na rin ho, part of the digitalization na ginawa na namin even before the COVID is the robotics. Meron na po tayong robot sa LTO. Sila ho yung gumagawa ng plaka. So ito ho, mga gagawin natin. Ngayon ho, kung mararapatin, Mr. President, let me say uh, a little bit about maritime. Dalawa ho yung programa na ginagawa for the first time during the term of President Duterte, Mayor Duterte. Una ho, electronic ticketing system. By December, pwede ko nang umpisahan yan because now it's on a test run. Ano ho ibig sabihin nito? May ticket na ho pag sumakay ka ng mga kuan natin, mga maritime vessels. Mawawala ho dyan yung scalping. Mawawala rin ho dyan yung overloading kasi, kasi ticketed na. Yung ticketing, uh, online ticketing, gagawin din ho yan sa tren. At ginagawa, of course, yan sa aviation. Gagawin ho sa maritime. So magkakaroon ho tayo ng online ticketing for the first time. Mabubuo natin yan by December. Uh, para sa ating mga kababayan, uh, nandito ho yung sinabi kong palamigan ng bayan. With the uh, problem on COVID at yung sitwasyon at lack ng storage ngayon, yung magsasaka, yung mga mangingisda, nasisira ho yung kanilang tanim at pangisda kasi walang storage. Ang ginagawa po namin, Mr. Mayor, Sir, isinunsad ho namin yung palamigan ng bayan. Ito ho yung cold refer na kung saan pinapadala namin ito sa mga komunidad na municipality na merong nangingisda at merong nagtatanim para matulungan yung kanilang pangingisda at ang kanilang pagtatanim, binibigyan ho namin sila. Nakadistribute na ho kami, 11 refer containers. Plano ko ho, pagdating ng Hunyo, I know it's a tough order to my people, but I'm pushing them. Gusto ko dalawang container a month para mapalawig yan. Then we can help di magsasaka and di mangingisda. Sabihin ko na rin, no, Mr. President, sa maritime, nakatapos na ho kami at report namin sa IATF kahapon nito, na matapos na kami ng puerto at gusto nilang inaguratein pa. Sabi ko, wala nang inaugurate, inaugurate. Operated mo na lang. <laughs> May higit sampu na ho yan. Operated mo na lang. Wala na tayong uh, op, uh, opera, uh, inauguration, inauguration. I hate ceremonies. Oh, basta operated mo na lang. Kasama ho dyan yung uh, pagtatapos ng puerto sa Pagasa. Handa na hong mag-turn over yung uh, provincial government of Palawan na i-turn over sa amin yon sa June uh, Uh, June 12 uh, sabi ko kung mahali aksipin ko na lang sa papel yan huwag na tayo mag uh, umpisahan na lang natin maraming salamat po Mayor uh, it was a very terrific uh, presentation uh, Secretary Tugani uh, we would like to ask uh, uh, Secretary Galvez to make the report first But, uh, what's the latest on your front Sir, sir, uh, you you have directed me to visit all the different regions uh, to uh, as a compliance to your directive and uh, see the real situations on the ground. I have already visited uh, Sambanga City, Davao City, Caraga Region, Bohol, Cebu City Region, the Laguna uh, Region to build the the uh, uh, quarantine facility there. Also, I visited Baguio City, sir, to see the the good things that uh, Mayor Magalong is doing. I also visited the Region 12, and also uh, I visited uh, the malls so that uh, we, we could see uh, if they are really following the protocols. So uh, they're very thankful to you, sir, and uh, also to Senator Bongo, because uh, we have given them more or less 200,000 rapid test kits. And uh, also we put up uh, the machine laboratory. When we went to, to Samboaga City, sir, We left uh, more or less 1,100 uh, kits, and now they, they have two laboratories already. And uh, also in Dabao, uh, we have already procured, uh, with the help of uh, the different um, companies, uh, San Miguel Corporation and also Ayala Corporation, they have, uh, they're trying to automate 
the Southern uh, Philippines uh, Medical Center. And uh, it can, can increase uh, the capacity of the uh, Southern Philippines Medical Center into more or less 2,000, 2000 tests per, per day. And uh, the, the, machines, the machinist will be flown from Sambuanga City to Davao City maybe this coming Saturday sir, to fix the, the machines. And then also the Caraga region, they're very thankful because also the, we provided them 2,500 test kits for, for, every, for every province. Uh, and also Bohol, uh, we saw that Bohol will be one of our uh, uh, candidates for the new normal because they have, uh, they're, they're still COVID free. And considering that uh, most of their, their businesses came from, from, uh, from uh, tourism, we are planning that uh, we will have a preparations for local tourism this coming June and July, and then um, they may be open, opening up. If the situation uh, situations uh, improves, uh, they will open up uh, uh, tourist, tourism again in Bohol. And they are very thankful that, uh, that uh, we have given them hope that uh, Bohol will be our model for the new, nor new normal. And also in Baguio City, sir, we, we visited the Baguio City and uh, the Baguio City, sir, is very sprawling right now. They have opened up uh, all the business except for, uh, for mass transportation and also hotel re and restaurants. But uh, I talked to Jerma Galong last night and if, uh, if uh, the IATF will approve that uh, they will be at uh, MGCQ, they will open up uh, some of its uh, uh, restaurants for dining, and also they will open up uh, local tourism in Baguio City. And then uh, um, during my visit on the malls, uh, we saw that uh, the people is really, really very, very, you know, very uh, uh, mindful of uh, your, your, you know, the, pre the, you know, the pronouncement of the president. As of this moment, what we saw to the malls, we thought that there are many people there, but uh, more or less 10 to 10, 20 percent of the mall capacity is ano, parang, ano pa rin sir, parang takot pa rin ng tao sir na magpunta ng malls. So majority, uh, nakita namin sir, mga 20 to 30 opening pa lang sir ng mga malls. Ang uh, marami lang matao is yung sa mga supermarket but uh, those who open, nakikita namin sir, ano sir, medyo meron pa rin natawag natin precautions. But I believe the, you know, the, when I talk to the administrator of the malls, they are very, very happy that uh, uh, the, the, the president, the government has given them the hope that, that there will be an opening. And uh, considering that uh, NCR will be GG secured, uh, they are, they are, no, they are very happy. So I also visited uh, Cebu City. Uh, we met with uh, Secretary Dino. And they are good, doing good, though the figures uh, that say, we, say, we, say, we, we saw is um, uh, medyo tumataas po yung, ano, yung kanilang, kanilang uh, uh, cases. But uh, we saw that uh, it is in Cebu that uh, they conducted expanded testing, they conducted 32,000 testing and, uh, with, uh, with the rapid test, and also more or less uh, 16 to 20,000 PCR tests. And they say that they are prepared for, no, for the GCQ, considering that uh, when, I, when we, we met all the businessmen there, and they're very happy that uh, we visited them, and they are preparing for the opening of business because they, they already lost a lot, lot in, uh, during the CQ. Uh, Mr. President, uh, all, for all those um, uh, LGUs and businessmen that we have visited, uh, they are very, very uh, thankful that uh, the government is uh, giving them the, the, you know, the, the support, especially when we go there. We brought PPEs, uh, protective uh, uh, personal uh, equipment for the health workers, and also we provided uh, test kits, including rapid test kits, and also we brought uh, all along with us with the PCR, PCR equipment. Uh, that's all, Mr. President, and uh, I would like to convey the, you know, the, 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 the gratitude of our local government officials and businessmen for the visit. Yeah. And also the gratitude of uh, the nation for your untiring services, uh, General Galvez. Dito sa Pilipinas, hindi tayo nagulang ng ano, for example, Benji sa Baguio. He's a very good uh, administrator, being a military man. Uh, he has that, uh, I said, the how to craft uh, a, a government uh, that is really uh, fit for your, uh, in your, your jurisdiction. Uh, maraming mga leaders na ganon. 
But mayroon namang iba. And I don't blame them actually. Uh, they say that uh, uh, I do not have any quarrel with uh, Richard Gomez. Uh, as, uh, he was the one who said that he's not going to accept anybody from entering or for that matter leaving the place. Okay malang yan. Uh, it's a uh, part of uh, maybe the vigilance that uh, a person nurtures in his heart of how to do it. But, you know, there are uh, also uh, constitutional issues that are involved, and those are sacred ones. And for those who are not really pronounced to be infected, positive, uh, there's no reason why you should not accept them, especially those who are returning to their homes from uh, doing a, a work abroad. Kawawa naman kasi. So, yung constitutional right, this is, there's no, uh, there's no really uh, a reason why you should not uh, accept uh, them with open arms. I think uh, this has been understood by everybody. And uh, unless, uh, well, for one, if you are uh, positive, you can stay with the place where government has to provide for the hospitalization. Uh, I want to make it clear that uh, as much as possible, the ordinary citizen, the Filipino, does not have to spend money. If he is sick, he can seek hospitalization and charge everything to government. All that I know, if he happens to be in that place, and he cannot move out, and maybe he's not uh, welcome to the place. Uh, he can stay where uh, uh, where he finds himself, and uh, this I would like to convey to the mayor. Help anyone, not, not even Filipinos, foreigners, who are in your place, and who go to you, or who goes to the municipal uh, uh, building, uh, the, the seat of governance of your municipality to seek help, you should expedite the hospitalization. Tulungan ninyo yung mga Pilipino. Total, uh, I will pay. I will pay for the expenses. Walang problema yan. Uh, you just uh, sign a whatever document there. I will pay for the hospitalization of any Filipino who finds himself in a strange place and he has nowhere to go. That is really an order uh, of the national government to the local governments. Help. Do not deny and you must expedite the hospitalization until he is cured. No problem about payment, I will pay. Just bill me and I will pay. Now we'd like to hear uh, for uh, uh, something, uh, next speaker, uh, I'd like to ask General Anyo to... Uh, Maraming salamat po, Mr. President. Uh, first of all, kung merong isang positive po na nadala ang COVID crisis na to ay uh, sa larangan ng peace and order. Uh, mula po nung uh, panahon bago mag-lockdown, mula January 5 hanggang March 16, 11,004 uh, criminal cases po ang uh, limita or crimes. Pero mula po nung nag-lockdown tayo from March 17 to May 27, bumaba po yung ating crimes ng 4,479, 60% po ang naibaba sa, sa tinatag nating mga crimes, sa eight focus crimes. So ito po ay uh, magandang uh, development sa larangan ng peace and order. Pati rin po sa Bureau of Power Protection, ang ulat nila, kung ikukumpara po yung period mula January hanggang May, sa period po ngayong 2020, from 11,236 Fire incidents, bumaba po ng 10,698, 5% po. At sa 
Mga namatay sa sunog from 283 to 162, 43% down din po ang ating mga casualties mula sa fire. At sa ating mga violators sa po ng quarantine, uh, 184,467 po, ang na ang nakaroon ng mga violations at uh, 54% po ay naaresto. Ang iba naman dito, katulad ng 9%, ay binigil ng warning at ang 37% naman ay uh, pinagmulta. Uh, Tuloy-tuloy rin po ang pagbamatay natin sa lahat ng uh, peace and order. Sa atin po namang repatriation ng OFWs, Uh, ang lahat po ng ating LGUs ay uh, tumatanggap po, tumatanggap na po ng mga OFWs katulad po ng inyong instruction. Uh, kung nouna po ay merong alanganin sapagkat hindi sila sigurado kung uh, ito ay pwede pang makapanghawa. So nagkaroon po kami ng kasunduan sa lahat ng LGUs, mayors at uh, governors na lahat po ito ay tatanggapin at uh, pwede na lang sila mag-impose ng additional home quarantine. At kung talagang ang bahay ay masikip, pwede po sa isolation facilities sa mga barangays para abot tanaw na rin yung ating mga OFWs ng kanilang mga pamilya. So sa inyong pong kautusan ay uh, matatapos po natin hanggang Sabado na may uwi lahat. Uh, ang natitira na lamang po ay uh, 11,889 pero ang karamihan po ito ay nakabook na yung kanilang mga biyahe hanggang Sabado. At uh, ang naiwan na lang ay 6,468 na uh, kaya po nating matapos ito hanggang weekend. Sa atin pong pagbabago mula MEGCQ papuntang GCQ areas at iba naman pong uh, LGU sa magiging MGCQ, handang-handa na rin po yung ating mga LGUs sa pagpapatupad kasama yung ating mga kapulisan. Magkakaroon din po kami ng mga pagbabago katulad ng Uh, modified checkpoints ang ating patutupad. Uh, meron po tayong mga mobile at spot checkpoints at ito ay nandito sa mga strategic location para hindi magkabol-bol ang trapiko. At uh, magiging may pa rin tayo sa mga provincial borders. Within uh, the province po ay uh, hindi na kailangan yung uh, ini-issue ng mga barangay quarantine pass. Uh, travel pass na lang po para sa pagdaan niya from one LG, I mean from one province to another o kaya ay from one region to another ay makikita po natin na may kabuluhan talaga ang uh, ang nagbibiyahe at hindi siya nagbibiyahe lang para sa leisure lang. Uh, patuloy din po yung pag-inspection natin kasama ang DTI at DOLE sa iba't ibang mga business establishment para ma masigurado na ipinatutupad yung ating tinatawag na minimum health standards, lalong-lalo na po yung pagsusuot ng face mask, yung physical distancing, at uh, yung uh, pagsunod po na may limit ang uh, kapasidad sa pagtanggap ng mga customer sa loob ng mga shop at mga mall. Sa atin naman pong sub distribution, nakahanda na rin po tayo sa second tranche at uh, iniintay lang po natin ang, uh, ang, ang uh, pagbaba ng mga pondo galing sa DSWD sapagkat ang gagamitin nila ngayon ay uh, automated payment. Uh, base po sa mga uh, SAC form na na-submit na, na ng unang first tranche, mas mabilis po ito sapagkat uh, mga pag-automated payment na iwasan na rin yung pagkukumpul-kumpulan uh, at doon sa lugar na malalayo naman po ay uh, uh, manual pa rin pero katulong na po ang Armed Forces at saka Philippine National Police. Yung limang milyong additional po ay uh, kinukompleto natin yung mga pangalan. Sa ngayon po ay nasa 3,818,608 names na po yung nakukuha natin. At ito yung mga priority na makatanggap sa second trans. So handang-handa po ang ating uh, uh, LGUs at ang ating mga uh, kapulisan para sa pagpapatupad ng bagong uh, inyong idineklara na mga classification. Uh, bilang tulong din po sa ating uh, DOTR, yung binanggit po ni Secretary Tugade, na gusto natin na ang bicycle po ang maging isang pangunahing pamamaraan ng transportasyon. Kaya nagpababa rin po ako ng memo sa ating mga LGUs na yung lahat ng mga major thoroughfares ay magdugtong-dugtong, magkaroon ng bicycle lanes para ito po ay ating uh, ikampanya na gamitin ng ating mga kababayan uh, bilang pangunahing 
uh, transportasyon, lalo na kung malalapit lang naman yung mga opisinang pinapasokan at mga lugar na pinupuntahan. Uh, yan lang po, uh, Mr. President. At ready na po kami para sa papatupad ng bagong mga deklarasyon ninyo sa classification ng iba't ibang uh, lugar sa Pilipinas. Thank you po. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, sa Jar Anyo. Alam niyo, uh, if you heard him correctly, uh, I was talking about uh, enforcement and the role of the police. Uh, I repeat, there is no martial law in the Philippines. Far from it, we are uh, exercising the power of the state to protect uh, public health. That is all there is to it. Now, because sometimes enforcement can be a very tedious uh, process in explaining to the ordinary citizen, please understand that these are things uh, which we have to do because it is needed to be implemented. Yun lang po, walang ano, walang, huwag kayong matakot that there will be no arrest, detention or anything. It's purely, if at all, if there's any intervention or interdiction uh, done by uh, the law enforcement agencies. Pati yung, yung military, the role is just to implement the law. They are called upon to assist uh, the civil government. Yan lang ang trabaho na. At makita ninyo, uh, we are uh, progressing at a very fast rate because we were able to put in place the rules to be followed when uh, COVID uh, came in like a storm from the outside. Now, for our last speaker, I'd like to just give the floor to the, uh, uh, General uh, Lorenzana. Maraming salamat, uh, Ginoong Presidente. Uh, ito po ay dagdag lang sa mga ulat nila General Galvez at saka General Anyo tungkol dito sa mga ginagawa natin sa mga OFWs. Yung pong utos ninyong magpauwi tayo ng mga 24,000 na uh, OFWs na nasa, nasa Manila ay eh, natupad po. Saka na... Nalampasan pa po natin yung bilang na yun, ang ating naipauwi ay uh, 26,590. Uh, as of last night, mayroon pa, pang mga OFWs niyan, kasama na yung mga bagong dating, na 77,569. Ngayong araw na ito, umalis na, umuwi na yung 3,597. Mayroon pa ang titirang 3,972 na pwede na makakauwi nitong... Itong, uh, Linggong ito. Mr. President, yung ating uh, sistema ay naayos na natin. Medyo nagkabuhol-buhol na una dahil uh, marami tayong mga na salubong na problema. Pero naayos na po natin ito dahil uh, pinag-isa-isa natin. Kipagunayan kami sa, sa DOTR, sa DILG, at saka sa DOLE. Dahil lahat po ng mga ahensya na yan ay may pakialam sa OFWs. Ngayong Mula ngayon hanggang katapusan ng uh, Hunyo, sabi ni Sekretary uh, Bello ay may darating na 40,000 na OFWs. Uh, Kung po, we can assure you that uh, okay na yan, maayos na natin yan. And we are target, na, ang target po namin ay uh, hindi magtatagal na apat na araw yung mga OFW rito at nakakauwi na sila. Ngayon, uh, Kung matutuloy yung uh, balak ni Sekretary Tugadi na bubuksan niya yung mga ibang international gateway, ay pwede na nating idiretso yung mga ano doon, mga OFWs na darating at saka seafarers, yung pong nagkatrabaho sa barko, at doon na sila mag-testing. At, at least malapit na sila sa mga pamilya nila, hindi na sila malulungkot kung sila nadadalaw ng pamilya nila, kung nakakwarantin man sila. Pero ang kanpo rito, Ang balak po rito ay pag dumating po yung OFW, testing sa PCR, uh, PCR at mag-quarantine sila ng tatlong araw. Paglabas po ng uh, resulta ng test, kung sila ay negative, iuwi na po. Yun lang positive ang may iwan. 
Kung gano'n pong gagawin natin ay mapapadali po yung trabaho ng lahat at mapapadali rin yung pag-uwi ng mga OFW sa kanilang mga bahay. Yun lang po, Mr. President. Salamat, uh, General Lorenzano. Alam mo, uh, as you see, if you listen very carefully sa mga uh, pinag-usapan naman dito, it's all geared towards a governance uh, to take care of the citizens' uh, republic. Ang lahat ako namin ginagawa. At huwag ko kayong maniwala. Ako na yung nagsasabi sa inyo. Yung mga test-test na yung sabi nila yung the unfairly drag the name of uh, uh, Secretary Doke. Hindi ko totoo yun. Ang nagbili noon, ang, ang budget, pati yung Office of the President mismo, sinadya ko yun para madali. Tinanggal ko nga doon kasi overwork na ang Health Department. Ginawa ko yun para mabilis. Itong mga bidder na ito, who offered a lower price, never, never participated in the bidding. At ngayon yung matapos na, yun ang nagreklamo, offering a lower price, hoping that you would ignore the bidding and go for their price. Ito yung mga gago na ito, when they were first approached, mahal. Ngayon, may bidding, hindi sila sumali, and suddenly after that, and may I inform the Senator Drillon and Ping Lakson and everybody, ganon ang nangyari. Uh, we will have a report uh, coming your way, and that is the stand of the office of the President. Kamiho ang nag-utos niyan na dito na sa budget para pag-release ng pera madali, diretso na. Uh, it so happened that we have some talagang mga bullshit na tao at kayo pa maniniwala ka agad, you better wait for the official report. At least for respeto. Uh, little respect coming from the office of the president kasi sinadya ko yan. Right at the beginning, you must have heard, sinabi ko, itong pera na ito at binigay ng Congress Wag na wag ninyong gamitin. I said, I even used the word, do not fuck with it. Kasi sabi ko, emergency ito. Itong mga bidding, for, for, for as long as we are in a democracy, at sinasabi ko na nga ho sa inyo, tanggalin ninyo yung lowest bid. The lowest bid is the culprit of all corruption, be it national or local. Tanggalin ninyo yan, maghanap kayo ng ibang paraan. Kasi yung bidding na yan, people go around just to make money without really the things that they want to, to, to participate in a bid which is non-existent insofar as they are concerned. They are using uh, yung mga cornering of contracts tapos go into a bidding. And we can uh, explain that uh, carefully. Okay. Ito si Senator Drillo, sabi niya, I want to wear the money when, well, you will have the explanation. And better believe it because yun ang totoo. Hindi naman kami nabubula. We, I said, we do not, nabi ko, do not fuck with the people's money with more reason that we will not fuck with the money that are given. Thank you. And that was uh, President Rodrigo Duterte live there addressing the nation in Malacanang. He stressed that the National Capital Region will now be under a general community quarantine beginning this Monday, the 1st of June, while the rest of the country will be under a modified general quarantine. And in that briefing, cabinet secretaries also reported to their president their plans for the transition. 
And uh, according to the Education Secretary, uh, Leonor Briones, uh, no face-to-face -face classes when uh, the school year begins this August. And she also said television, radio options for areas without Connectivity. As for Health Secretary Duque, he says rising number of cases uh, due to the improved validation process. He also uh, said that the health system capacity is enough. As for the Interior uh, Secretary Año, he said that the peace and order uh, situation has improved uh, substantially during the lockdown and the crime rate is down by 60% since the beginning of the enhanced community quarantine. Regarding the uh, social amelioration program, he said that the second tranche of cash aid uh, will be given via automated payment. As for the uh, Transport Secretary at Tugade, he said that international gateways uh, will be expanded. Railway operations uh, from the LRT to the MRT can begin on Monday, the 1st of June, at a very limited capacity. And uh, he said that buses uh, will have a dedicated lane on EDSA. And during the general community quarantine, he said that uh, we will only see point-to-point uh, yeah, yeah, point yeah. buses uh, plying the main thoroughfare of EDSA. And there will be bike lanes to be put along the EDSA thoroughfare. And for uh, defense uh, uh, Secretary Lorenzana, he said they have addressed the uh, homecoming concerns of uh, overseas uh, Filipino workers and they hope to address this within the next four to five days. And that is the latest update and breaking news on the latest developments from Malacanang. Thank you very much for watching CNN Philippines. Join us again tomorrow for news you can use, news you can trust. I'm Rico Hizon. Stay home. Stay safe, stay healthy. Good evening.